Right. I've just recently acquired an Intel uh, late 2012 Mac Mini. It had 8 gigabytes when I made the video, but I've upgraded it to 16 gigabytes since. And uh, we're going to see how this goes by putting FreeBSD on it. Using the USB that I copied FreeBSD on, uh, I'm going to boot into the USB, which is the, the EF sys uh, labeled uh, device and oh that's not for a start i'm appreciating the full color on the loader screen that is very nice i'm used to ascii art so to me this is a win-win uh yeah so i'm using an external ssd to install actual operating system on and i'm booting off a usb stick with the image on and oh looks uh, usual there's a welcome to freebsd would you like to begin installation i don't know whether it's uh whether it's me but everything looks nice and clean and neat yeah, this is uh, to choose the uh, the keyboard map. Um, yeah, it's, I, I haven't zoomed into this one, but if you've installed FreeBSD, you know what this is. I'm just going to show you an anomalous list. I'm going to choose United Kingdom. And I'm happy with that, so I'll just continue at the top. Choose a host name for this machine. Well, I'm going to call it Callisto because it's little. And choose an optional system component, so I don't want debugging. I'll choose ports, and I think I'm not going to put source. I'm going to leave it at that. Auto ZFS. I think I'll choose that. And I want to change the pull type and disk to uh, Stripe, no redundancy. And I need to choose the external Kingston SSD, which is DA1. Definitely don't want the internal drive. And I think we're going to keep everything else. Yeah, I'm going to keep everything else to default. And proceed. And are you sure you want to destroy your current? Yes, I do. I don't think there's anything valuable on the SSD. And away we go. I'll fast forward uh, the install process. It doesn't take long, but I'll fast forward anyway. Ah, there are multiple FreeBSD EFI boot entries. Would you like to remove them all and add a new one? That's because I tested this out beforehand. Uh, yes, I do. And please select a network interface. It's got the Ethernet thing. It hasn't detected the Wi-Fi, which I didn't think it would. So BGE0. Yeah. Well. Would you like to configure IPv4? Yes. Would you, you like to use DHCP? Yes. I don't want IPv6. And it's already pre-configured for the DHCP, so I'm going to leave it at that. Is this machine CMOS set to you? Uh, no. And go down to choose the correct region, so it's Europe. And then down to United Kingdom. Does the time zone look reasonable? Yes, it does. Uh, I don't want to configure that, because I can skip it. And I can skip that. And what would I like to be started at boot? I want mouse, NTPD, and PowerD. I don't want dump dev. And leave SSHD there. And we're going to harden the system now. So I'm going to choose that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Um, maybe that. No, what do I want to stay at that? And oh, listen, this menu allows you to install firmware packages. So it says no package found for device. 0x0166, zero zero six six, which I think is the uh, GPU. But we'll do that after installation. Install in firm, <laughs> installing firmware. This may take a moment, or it might take a moment. Would you like to add users? Yes. Uh, but no point if we didn't. Uh, I'm just going to put my name in. If you've done FreeBSD before, you'd know what this is. We need to put wheel, operator, and importantly, video. And default for these... Uh, password and password again. And remember your password, or otherwise you won't be able to log in. Uh, okay, yes. Don't want another user. No. And I think with it, it's finished. Uh, exit there. We don't need to change anything. And you can either reboot and uh, quickly take out the USB stick, or as I'm starting to do lately, it's it's um, I find it a lot better. Um, I go into the shell and just shut down uh, nice and gently and take it out at your leisure. So I'm shutting down, nice and gently, and when it's ready, just remove the USB, and we can reboot into the system. And here we are. So now we've got one option, well, we've got two options. We've got the internal drive or the external drive. I've taken out the USB, and we're going to boot up in FreeBSD. 
Again, we get that lovely splash screen, that lovely boot screen. I'm going to fast forward this because it's basically the same as it always is. And here we are. I don't know, the text uh, looks really nice. In this console text. Anyway, uh, let's put name. And we're in. FreeBSD is actually on the Mac, which is nice. I'm going to clear the screen. Now I'm going to use this machine as a, as a desktop. Uh, I'm not as a server, so we're going to have to put in some a few things to make that uh, happen. It's not difficult in FreeBSD. It's not as smooth and as uh, easy to use as uh, perhaps CoSBSD, but you know you can you can make something good out of it. There's no updates available. And we need to PKG install fast fetch just to show you uh, that it's indeed running on a Mac. And fast fetch. There we go. Mac Mini 6.1. Is it 6.1 or 6.1? I don't know. Um, yeah. It's got Intel Core uh, i5. It's a dual core, but I mean, it's running at two, uh, four threads. And the GPU is an Intel device 0166. So, yeah, it's an integrated. I think it's um, Intel HT 4000. But we, we need to put the firmware in for that. So, talking of which, we're going to PKG install DRM KMOD. And you don't, I suppose, have to download all of these, but I'm going to put them in anyway. You can pick out the one that you need. And it tells you there, look, uh, which is quite handy. For AMD GPU or Intel or Radeon, uh, for because we're using Intel, it's um, an i9 15 KMS. So we need to load that in. And we need to load that in with the system boot. So we're going to use sysrc kld underscore list and then equals and then speech marks i915 kms and that'll put into the rc.com file so that it will uh, load up when the system reboots so next on this list of things that we need to do is to change the freebsd package from quarterly to latest so we get the latest packages Funny enough, that, isn't it? So we don't edit the original file directly. We, we make a copy and we edit that one. So use a local, etc. PKG repos. And then we copy uh, the freebsd.conf file from the main system to this uh, new directory. And we edit this one. So preserving the original file. So keeping it nice and safe. This will override the original anyway. So you're not doing any harm. So we just need to delete quarterly and put latest again if you've done FreeBSD, you know this and this will give us the latest packages so we we're working with a, an up-to-date system so it's pkg update to pull in that latest list and there we go oh god there's four thirty four thousand seven hundred there seem to be quite a few missing hmm anyway uh, it's already asking us to upgrade the ones that we uh, we installed earlier. Now we need to install uh, desktop and perhaps uh, browser. Uh, you know the usual. So it's XFCE, Xorg, Firefox, and uh, we'll call that it for now. And we'll just to get a basic desktop up and going. So we'll fast forward uh, the install. Right, oh, PK, package database is busy with while closing. Okay, well, I don't think that's a problem. So we're going to edit the Xinit RC, and we're just going to put a little line in, and what that'll do is enable us to start XFCE. When we, you can have a user login manager, or you can use Start X, which I, I always do. But you need to put this in, otherwise it's not going to do anything. So we can save that. And hopefully we can put in start X and we will be good to go. Right. Okay, though. You see, you didn't see it on screen. For some reason, it didn't record. But when I put in start X, it didn't start up. And that's because even though I put in the driver for the uh, graphics card, I haven't loaded into the system right now. So I'd have to have a reboot or I can load it in live as it was. So I put KLD load i915 KMS. 
Yep, that's loaded in now, so I should be able to do start X, and it should work. Easy mistake. So we'll try again, start X. Yep, it's loading in. And that was quick. I like that. So yeah, here we have an XFCE desktop running on a uh, late 2012 Mac Mini. It's an Intel Mac Mini. But I can tell you something, it feels quick. It, it really is. Everything is really fast. And it's only a dual core, so I, <laughs> who knows? It's really fast. In some respects, it feels quicker than my um, Z600, which I'm using uh, right now. And YouTube, of course. We'll have a look, see if uh, things are working. Put the best uh, YouTube channel on the YouTube network. And there it is. There we go. Yep, it's fine. But it's plain fine. So yeah, I'm really impressed. Everything rendering really quick. There's no lag or delay. Yeah, I think, uh, and, and I even tweaked the system yet. So I think I'm going to enjoy this. So what I'll probably do is put um, KDE Plasma on. I'll do Caden Live. I'll do all the usual things. And um, I might do another video in the future showing you actually using it. But we'll see. Anyway, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you've given one or two of my videos a thumbs up already, then please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, then don't forget to hit that notification bell to uh, let you know when I'm making a new video. Otherwise, you might miss it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.